I'm currently outside Inverness Railway Station, just gone five o'clock in the morning. Today is going to be a very challenging day as I visit every single station on the Highland Main Line between Inverness and Perth. Let's head into the station now. The Highland Main Line, which was built in stages and is 118 miles and 9 chains long, and has 10 stations on this line. The aim is to visit all 10 stations in a single day in this challenge. So I'm now standing on the platform and right behind me is the 0536 ScotRail service to Glasgow Central, Class 43 HST. And I'm going to be taking that to King Gussie Station, which is the first station I'm stopping at on this Highlands Bay Line Challenge. Also, Inverness Railway Station opened on the 6th of November 1855 by the Inverness and Nairn Railway. I'll go into more detail about that railway station in the pink comment down below with the Inverness and Nairn Railway. Just like that we have left Inverness and we're cruising down the Highland Bay Line to get to our first station. Also today's plan is, is to go back and forth between the stations because some stations have regular service and some stations have a kind of infrequent service. But honestly the whole day is actually going to take me 14 hours. I don't get to Perth about 9 o'clock this evening. So we have now reached King Gussie, the first of many stations we're stopping off at today. This station opened on the 9th of September 1863 by the Inverness and Perth Junction Railway. The station building dates from 1893 by William Roberts. <laughs> So there's two reasons why I picked King Gussie first as my first location. Five minute walk from the railway station, there is a co-op, so I can get some food and drinks to last me throughout the day. And yes, they do have a Costa coffee machine at that co-op. Secondly, is to see the Caledonian sleeper. It's on its way up to Inverness, so I'm gonna be seeing that at King Gussie station. <laughs> So also at King Gussie Station, it does have a lovely signal box right behind me, which you can just see on screen now with set of full signals. It does have a level crossing and it's just a lovely station. The only problem is though, as I'm filming this about 20 past seven in the morning, the ticket office is not open yet. It's not open till I think 20 past eight, which is gonna be a pain getting my ticket to the next station, which I'm actually heading to Blair Athol I am waiting for the 0736 Scott Rail service to take us there. The next stop is Pitlockley. So we have reached the second station, Blair Athol, 
And this also opens on the 9th of September 1863 by the Ibles and Perth Junction Railway. When it was open though, it was actually spelt differently. It was spelt Blair at Hull. Was it till 1893 to 1894 it was changed to the name it's got now, Blair Athol? So platform 2 at Blair Athol does have a waiting room. Shall we see if it's open? Waiting room's open. So I'll just go outside the station for a second to have a look around while well, I've got some time to kill. And right behind me there is the Athol Arms Hotel. It does look really stunning to be honest, that building. I just also found out there is a Premier Convenience store there as well. How very convenient. So also just south of Blair Athol Station has a level crossing and right next door to the level crossing it has this lovely single box as well. Now I honestly thought we were going to have a problem but the problem has been averted. The train I'm catching the R856 to my next station Newton Moor which goes on to Inverness left Stirling 12 minutes late. However though, it made up the time at Doncown and Burnham and is running on time, which is good. Because honestly, there is no plan B. And if there is, I have to make it up as I go along. So I'm going to cash that train now, like I said, to get to Newton Moor when we start the back and forth. So we have now reached Newton Moor, which is the next station that I'm stopping off at. And this is also the shortest one, I've only got 15 minutes here. Now this station opened on the 9th of September 1863 by the Inverness and Perth Junction Railway. It was listed for closure in 1980s, but still managed to survive that closure. And as you can see, it is just one platform. The only single platform on the Highland Main Line. And you can tell it does used to have two platforms here because there is a disused platform on the other side. Just want to take this time to thank the YouTube channel members and Patreon supporters and they're listed on screen right now. And thank you for supporting the channel, it is really appreciated. If you do want to be a YouTube channel member or Patreon supporter, links are in the description down below. However though, we shall be leaving Newton Moor Station on the 0945 to Glasgow Queen Street. The next station I'm getting off at is Dunkeldon Burnham, which is another back and forth job. And honestly, being here at Newton Moor, it's got a lovely single box which I think is disused. But there's nothing really here to be honest. And I've also just noticed the station building does survive, but I think that's private residence now. I just realised so when we get to Dunkeld and Burnham, the platforms there are so low that I have to step off the train using steps. This is going to be interesting.
have made it to Dunkeldon Burnham. And one quirky thing about this railway station is that the platform is absolutely low here. So low that you've got to use these steps right here to climb on and off the train. That's something that I don't want to experience again, but I have to, to leave this station. <laughs> Most of the stations we are looking at opened in 1863. This station actually opened much earlier, it actually predates 1860. Dunkeldon Burner was opened on the 7th of April 1856 by the Perth and Dunkeld Railway as a terminus until the line was extended towards Picklockery in 1863. Also in the 1980s, this is one of the last stations to also have gas lights as well. Just make out through that window there, the old ticket office of Dunkeld and Burnham. It just looks absolutely magnificent. Shame it's disused though. Last year I actually did a blog which ended up at Dunkeld and Burnham, which was chasing a charter, the Klangsman, from London, Euston to Inverness. And I got two Class 47 diesel locomotives at this location. Sadly though, I'm not travelling on Class 47 to Inverness. We're actually travelling on diesel multiple units because my next train is the 1213 Scott Rail service which will take us to Dalwini. So we have now reached Dalwini and honestly there's not really much here to be honest probably a distillery, a few houses, that's about it. Also, on the way up to Dalwini, we did pass the Royal Scotsman, which is a shame really, but hopefully we will get that another time. Also, this station was opened on the 9th of September 1863 by the Inverness and Perth Junction Railway. The station buildings, however, they didn't, weren't really finished till 1864. But I think I saved the best one till last. The chips are actually quite nice to be honest. Also at Dalwini, someone else has turned up. You right, Jordan? I want to walk for here for Perth, innit? Apparently he's walked it from Perth, but you know what else I'm going to do? I'm going to pop a video right in front of him. Feel free to give that a watch. And thank you for watching. I'll see you on board the Cyber Express for the next journey down the line.